with Mrs. Miller at BVISD. We've been studying genetics and heredity. And what we've been studying is Mendelian genetics, or simple genetics. But not, not all genetics are so simple. Well, what we want to be able to do today is distinguish between alleles for incomplete dominance and codominance, explain patterns of multiple allelic and polygenic inheritance, and analyze the patterns of sex-linked traits, as well as summarize inter how internal and external environments can affect gene expression. So there's something we we're, we have never encountered before called the third geno or third phenotype. We've always dealt with one or the other, but now we're actually coming up with a third phenotype. Now, pr uh, before this, on our Punnett squares, we would come up with a three-one ratio, where three of the phenotypes would be the dominant trait and one would be the recessive trait. Now we're going to start looking at this incomplete dominance and we're going to get something called an intermediate expression out of this. Now in an F1 generation where we have um, pure, purebreds in each generation, th that or in each uh, parent, the, the F1 generation is going to be a complete intermediate. But in this F2 generation, we are actually looking when we cross the, that F1 generation again. So we see that neither trait is truly dominant. And the way we're coding for this is we're going to have a prime, which is this wonderful little thing right here. And that actually co codes for a defective enzyme. And that's creating no pigment whatsoever. Now, if you notice, we're getting a one-to-one -one assortment, and this means that we're still supporting Mendel's law of segregation, but we're, we're having one red, one white, and two pinks. Well, that is if they are not completely dominant, but what if both alleles are completely dominant? Let's say, let's call it black and white. Now, if we cross these and we use their own letters because both are dominant, we're actually going to end up in the F1 generation completely striped. Now in the F2 generation, we are going to be one black, one white, and two striped. And we're getting that stripedy color that, I'm going to call it striped, but they're the expression of those both colors because they are both dominant. So we're going to call this a co-dominant allele. And it's actually fairly common for this to happen. It is actually fairly common for multiple alleles to control a trait. So when we're looking at skin color, hair color, and eye color, we're going to have multiple ideas on this. So in your listening check journal, you're going to have to do pro problem solving 12.2 from page 318 in your book. So we need to understand sex determination, those XY chromosomes. So we know in the human, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now the first 22, 1 through 22, are called autosomes, and the 23rd is called a sex chromosome. We know that men have an XY and women have an XX. Women can only contribute to the, um, an X to the next generation, while the man controls the sex because he has a Y. So in 1910, a gentleman called Thomas Hunt Morgan discovered sex-linked sex inheritance, and you're going to do a journal on that this week on his experiments. So there are certain traits that are controlled by genes. And we know that, but there are certain traits that are controlled by these sex genes. And we actually designate them by, uh, by putting them as a superscript on the X. Now, if they are controlled by the Y, we never use that because there is no homologous chromosome that's going to cover that. So Y will never have a corresponding chromosome, so no scrubs, subscripts are ever used. But if a re recessive allele on a male's X chromosome has no dominant allele on the Y to match, that trait is going to be expressed. And we see this in color blindness and in a couple other uh, recessive traits. So let's talk about some polygenic inheritance. They, this is the idea that um, the inheritance pattern of a trait can be controlled by two or more genes, which may or may not be on the same chromosome. Now, and not just to add to that complication, these genes could have two or more alleles for the same trait. So we can designate them as big A, capital A, little uh, A, capital B, little B, capital C, little C. We still use them to determine alleles, but here the capital letter doesn't exactly mean that it's dominant, that, that allele is dominant. So we see that almost all heterozygotes have that intermediate expression rather than a true expression of one or the other. So if we look at this nice graph, 
And this one happens to be containing, uh, or being about skin, skin, skin pigmentation. I'm sorry for that. We see that it actually confirms like a Punnett square, where we see that law of independent assort or law of segregation. Now we have environmental influences, and, they, and your traits can be influenced by the environment. Now the external environment, temperature, nutrition, light, chemicals, and infection can. Uh, change how your traits are expressed. So we can talk about fur color that um, is affected by temperature and so you see that uh, Siamese cats if you would actually place an ice pack upon their back or one of their uh, lighter colored parts of their fur it would actually turn dark. Now leaf size and color is also affected by light so we know that that is a trait expression that is controlled. Now internal, horm or internal influences could be hormones and age and we see this with male pattern baldness. We see this with the expression of the changing of the voice and hair growth during the teenage years and certain other types of um, hormone-induced changes. So here's your listening check. Be sure to write the answer in your journal.